I wanted to show you how to put together a light and reflector kit for around $850. I recently did a VR PC build video and I used these tools and they worked great. Um, so I thought I might put together a little video in case you might be interested in doing the same. Here's some clips from that video that I made. All right, let's get started. So I went with a newer C stand from Amazon. I decided to go with a C stand instead of a light stand because I found that they're much more stable under load. And also they come with an arm that's pretty much essential for any sort of overhead shots that you might be interested in doing. Now on Amazon, there are a few choices from newer. I personally went with the adjustable leg version in case I want to use it on any sort of uneven terrain. When I got the C stand, I was pleasantly surprised. It is definitely sturdy, it gets the job done. Do note though that it is more hollow and light to the touch than a high-end C-stand. I've used higher-end C-stands before in my uni and you definitely notice the difference between one or the other, but for the equipment that I'm using for, it's fine. Now, as we're going for a more budget option here, I chose to go for just some generic sandbags from eBay, but you know what? I like the bright yellow in these and I reckon it's a pretty good safety feature so people can see it from far away. Now to actually fill up the sandbags, I went for some landscaping chips from Bunnings instead of your traditional sand. The reason being, you can imagine if you're on shoot and the sandbag breaks, having to deal with sand, oh my god, that's a pain, right? But if you've got, you know, small rocks, you can pick it up by hand, and I found that's a little bit easier in that circumstance. So with the rocks, I'm just filling them into double sealed plastic bags that I got from the supermarket. I then double bag them and then they go into the sandbag. But do make sure that you get all the air out of the plastic bag before you put it in the sandbag, just so it doesn't pop. Once it's in the sandbag, all you do is just grab the little Velcro strip that's on the sandbag, close it in, push it in, and you're good to go. To give you an idea, out of a 10 kilo bag of landscaping chips, you're able to get four 2.5 kilo sandbags. When you're using a C-stand and with an arm in particular, always make sure that the knuckle is to the right of you. The reason being, you can imagine you've got so much weight at the end of that arm with the light and the softbox, and naturally that's gonna want to droop. Now, if you have that knuckle to the right side of you, when that light droops, it's actually gonna tighten the knuckle, but if it was the left side of you, it'd actually loosen. So it's just that extra little step that can prevent your entire equipment crashing down. This power block has something that's called an RCD. That's a residual current device. This stuff is pretty important. My uni in particular would not let you rent out equipment unless you definitely, definitely was using one of these. Before you use your equipment, you definitely need to test it. Now the way this is done is you lift up a plastic flap, grab the power switch, put it to the on position, press the test button. If it goes back down to the off position, that's great. That means that your circuit has tripped, it was a successful test, and you're ready to use your equipment. So what I'm using here is a Godox Okta 95 cm suck box. The cool thing about this is that it came bundled with the light, so I got this one for free. Now, it's a great softbox. The performance out of it is awesome, but I must say it was a pain to set up at first. These white rods that come with the softbox actually come separate, they're not pre-installed, and it does take a lot of patience and it is a pain, so do be warned. But once you pass that hurdle, it's great. I recommend leave the rods already pre-installed so that all you do is you just open up the softbox and it's ready to go. The cool thing is that it comes with two diffusion layers and a grid as well. I love the diffusion that it gives to the light and it really helps in getting that sort of contrasty look to your image once you put on that grid. The light that I'm using is a Godox VL150 LED light. I chose this light because it has great performance comes with a really nice carrying case, and it also features a Bowens mount, so you can use a whole bunch of light modifiers and soft boxes. The best part about this light is that the fan is super quiet, so you definitely don't hear that noise in your audio or your video. It's a really durable light, great build quality, and I've been very happy with it. So I first mounted the light onto the arm of the C-stand, then I tilted the arm vertically to balance out the weight, and then I reposition the head of the light to where I want the light to actually go. 
When you're changing one of the joints on the C-stand, always make sure all the other joints are nice and tight, just so everything doesn't come crashing down on you. With the AC adapter that comes bundled with the light, one end goes into the RCD, the other end goes into the light's control box, and then from there, you have another cable that runs from the top of the light's control box into the light itself. The control box that comes bundled with the Godox VL150 light, it's been great for me. It's super easy to dial in your brightness and it also comes with a remote. Now, I think an awesome feature that it has is the fact that you can use V-mount batteries to provide portable power to the light. So if you need to do any sort of outdoor shoot, you're covered. With my reflector, I wanted to have the ability to tilt and angle it vertically. This is pretty important if, for example, you're trying to fill the bottom of someone's face with light, or you're trying to shine light into a dark motherboard like I was doing for the VRPC build video. The simplest and most cost-effective way that I could work out on how to do this was using two light stands and clips from Newer on Amazon. I didn't need the most highest quality. All I'm doing is I'm just trying to hold up a reflector and it definitely doesn't weigh much. You definitely want to be using your sandbags when working with light stands as well. It just helps to keep them grounded when you're raising them and also to compensate for the lighter weight. By having one light stand raised higher than the other, you can tilt the head of the clips and angle the reflector. What this will allow you to do is bounce light on an angle. And this is pretty important if you only have one key light as it can really, really save you when you're trying to get proper exposure on a subject. Honestly, it all worked great. I'm really happy with the setup. And here you can actually see them side by side, the light and the reflector. So yeah, I hope that helped you. I hope that gave you a few light setup ideas. I'll also include a price list in the description so you can see where I bought all this stuff from. Let me know if this helped you in any way. I'd love to hear from you or if you have any questions or anything like that. Awesome guys, take care, have a good one.